Hey everyone, today I'm playing a game called Hexarchy. It's basically a 4X game in the genre of civilization. Uh, as you can see, it's a hex-based map and we'll build cities and move units around this map. The unique features of Hexarchy are, one, it's designed for multiplayer, which is awesome. The games usually take place in less than an hour, so you have this crisp competitive gameplay, which is really hard to get in the popular 4X games, like the Endless Space or Civilization or whatever. And second, it has a deck building mechanic. So you have a deck of cards and to build any units or build or buildings in your cities, you have to play the associated card. So there's some randomness about drawing the right cards at the right time. Like many deck building games, you can actually scrap or trash cards from your deck that you don't think you'll use anymore to make you draw your better cards more frequently. I'm going to walk through a game with you uh, to, to show you the features of the game, but also to do a little bit of a tutorial to explain some of the mechanics of how the game works. Stay tuned till the end of the video and we'll discuss how you can get access to this game, which is still in development. My first hand, I'm always dealt the found capital city card, which is what you use to place your first city. There's a couple of recommended locations, but I really want to settle my city as close as possible towards the center of, of the island. And I also would love to settle right next to this holy site. I'll explain what that does later. Actually, it's pretty obvious. Normally your city would only um, have in its territory the tiles immediately adjacent to it, but a holy site claims the surrounding hexes when it is claimed. It also produces happiness and culture. Okay, the hammers down here represent my production. This is the primary resource you spend to play other cards. For example, it would cost me two hammers to play this scout, to, to build the scout in my city. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. I'd love to get a scout out quickly to pick up this goody hut. It gives a random bonus when a unit moves to the tile. So I'm gonna go ahead and play my scout. So all I do is I click the tile and move it up into the main play area and it will highlight the tiles at which I can build this unit. So I click here. You can see it's consumed two of the five hammers I had. And now my scout is in play. The, these little sleep symbols mean that he can't take an action on the first turn he's built. Another really important aspect of this game is you can't by default build more than one item in any city on any given turn. If I wanted to try to build this warrior here in this city, it wouldn't let me. So I've got a couple options here. I could use two hammers to research fishing. These blue cards are technologies. Uh, instead of building anything on the map, what it basically would do if I were to play it is add four new cards to my deck, one of which I can actually pick and put into my hand right now. The rest will go into my discard pile to be shuffled back into my deck. My other option would be to play this great work card. This is a unique card that France starts with. It looks like it adds happiness to my city and adds two culture per population. This doesn't do much because my city is already maxed out on happiness and I only have a population of one. This is a good time to explain how trashing cards works. I think I'm actually gonna trash my warrior. He's not a very strong unit. He's only got four attack power and I'll very quickly get stronger units. So what I do is I pick him up and I drag him over to the left where it says destroy card for two hammers and one science. So the first card you destroy on your turn gives you this hefty bonus. So right now you'll see I have three hammers and zero science. This little area right here is my inventory. When I scrap my warrior, I now have five hammers and one science. Science can be used as an alternate resource instead of hammers to play technology cards. So you can see I can spend two hammers or one science. So now that I have my science, if I click fissing, drag it up here, I think all of these will go into my discard pile, but I think I'm gonna take hunter gatherers into my hand. It consumed my science and still leaves me with five hammers. Ah, so Hunter Gatherers is a civic card, a green card, which acts a lot like technologies, except you can't use science to, to spend them. So again, what it does when I play it is it adds two new cards to my deck, one of which I can actually put into my hand. This one is a unit upgrade that I can upgrade my military units with. Forest Forage lets me gather yield and special resources from a tile in my territory or near it. I'm going to take Forage. I'm going to see where I can use it. So I can use forage to gather the the yield or the resources from any tile nearby. I think I'm going to get, what I want to do is I want to grow my city to have an extra population. So I'm looking for a tile with a lot of food. 
I don't see anything with more than two food. So I'm just going to pick this tile here with two food. But before I do, I want you to watch these little slots here. So I currently have a population of one. And this shows that when I get three food units, it will grow to a population of two. So we'll click this and we can see now I've got that the, the yield from this tile, which was two food. And it's filled two of the food slots. And once I get one more, my city will grow. And let's look at what my city is currently producing. It's currently producing five hammers, one gold, one happiness, and one culture. Um, my population unit is working this tile, which gives two gold and one food. I can move this to another tile if I wanted to work a different tile, but I think that might still be the best. Actually, this one's two food, a happiness, and a culture. I don't need happiness right now, so let's leave it there. However, I still have three hammers left. If I end my turn now, those hammers will be converted to gold. My other option is to draw a new card from my deck for two gold. I only have one gold, but I could always use one hammer to make an extra gold, draw a card. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna spend this two gold to draw a card. Hope I get something that only costs two hammers. Nope, I got a settler, which costs four hammers and lets me found, found new cities. Okay, I guess I'm going to just use one of my last hammers for this great work. Okay, so now let's end the turn. Interesting, why didn't I get the food? Oh! Because my population consumes one food. So my city didn't grow because I was only producing one food, but I'm also consuming one food. That's important to remember. So change next turn plus zero means I'm basically food neutral right now. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is I wanna move my scout down to pick up this goodie hut. This little symbol right over here says that I have uh, one unit with, with no action assigned yet. So I can either click on the scout or I can click over here to automatically select my next unit. And these are the actions available to me. I want to move. For now, let's move right over here. I think we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scrap one of these cards to get a science. It's always more efficient to spend a science than it is to spend two hammers to research one of these. I don't, I don't want to scrap one of my science cards because they lead to all these other cards. And if I scrap them now, I basically completely block off that part of the tech tree. In fact, let's look at the tech tree. So if I were to scrap agriculture, discard it out of my deck, I would have no way to get access to any of these cards for the rest of the game. So for now, I'm gonna strap, scrap strength, which is a, a unit promotion. If I wanted to, I could use it on my scout to give him a little extra combat strength, but I don't need that. My scout's not gonna be a warrior anyway. So I'm gonna destroy this card. Gives me the science. I'm gonna use that science to play agriculture, which gives us a couple options to get better food and city growth. So I'm gonna pick the farm to put it. all the other cards went into my discard pile, but the farm I can play. I'm gonna play it right here. It added one food yield, but also two wheat resources. And I'll explain what those do next turn. Okay, we still have four hammers. Could use them to research one of these technologies. Um, if I do that, I'm not gonna be able to play anything else from it. What about this one? I think again, I'm gonna draw a new card off the top of my deck, see if I can play that one. Okay, woodworking will give me some options. I'm going to spend my two hammers to play woodworking. And once I do this, I'll have two hammers left. So I, I would be able to play the lumber mill, which increases the output of forest tiles. So now I'm going to play my lumber mill on this forest, which now produces three hammers instead of one. But that only matters if I'm actually working that tile, which I'm not. I want to work this tile. Tile our change next turn should be plus one, so our city should grow. It did. Okay, you can see our population's now two. It's gonna take a lot more food to get up to three. Okay, now we can explain what those wheat resources did. Those resources come over here into my inventory. They act just like the food that a tile yields, but I have more options. So I could right away spend these two. I can click on my city and it would fill up two of these food slots, just like food yield from a tile. But there's more flexibility. I can choose which city I use them on. So if I had another city, I could use that to grow another one. I can sell the food in the marketplace. So that's what this button is here. I could, right now, there's a one science available for purchase for three gold. I could sell a food. 
So I stick it there and I'll get gold in return for that on the next turn when another player buys it. So let's use this food in our city there. We can see we've added one food resource. Oh, I didn't even pay attention to what happened when we got this goody hut. So the goody hut was acquired during the turn uh, change. I'll have to go back and look at the video of what happened. Okay, here we're picking it up. Ah, free settler, cool. So that settler is there on the tile with the scout. Okay, I always like to scrap one card per turn if possible to give me the science and the, and the two hammers for it. I think I'm gonna scrap slavery. And then I'm gonna use that science to get, make masonry, which unlocks all sorts of good stuff. Let's get an ax man. So we can get a little bit of military presence out on the board. Okay. So, most military units, when you build them, consume a population from your city. So it's like, instead of the population working my territory, that population gets converted to the military unit. But let's go ahead and do it just to see what it is. Yep, our population went down to one, and we now have our axe man here. Uh, what else can we do? We could build another farm to get even more food and grow our city faster. A pasture gathers resources from any animal tile in addition to producing one extra hammer. I can see a horse over here, um, but that's not currently in my territory, so my city has to grow a little more by culture before I can build a pasture there. So let's just build another farm. Okay, so important fact here. You only get the yield from tiles that you're actually working. So this gold and these two food, I get because I'm working this tile. You can see I'm working it uh, with my population because of the dotted line around it. All of the other tiles that I'm not currently working, I don't get the yield from. But resources, so the two wheat on this tile and the two wheat on this tile, you get regardless of whether you're working it or not. So next turn, I should get four wheat resources. All right, I think I remember when I was placing my city that there was another goody hut over here. So I'm gonna send my scout over this direction. I'm gonna send my warrior. Oh, he spawned this turn, so I can't move him. I'm not gonna do anything with my warrior. Now, I also have this, the settler on this tile, which I got from the goody hut. When I click on this tile, you can see all units that are there. Multiple units can be stacked on the same tile. So to issue orders to one or both, you can highlight the units here. So I've sent my scout off this direction, my settler, I'm gonna look for a new place to settle. I think I like this area up here. And now I'll end my turn. Ah, we can see our first enemy, Beijing, up here. I'm glad we found that. Now we know which direction to move our warrior. We're gonna go have a little bit of combat. So in a normal game of Hexarchy, your goal is to get to be the first player to get to 100 victory points. Right now I have 15, and you get victory points by controlling more hexes, by having high population, lots of units, lots of holy sites, and importantly, by conquering other players. So unlike Civ Six, where there's separate victory conditions, you can go to for a cultural victory or a religious victory or a domination victory. In this case, everything you do to grow your empire contributes victory points, and there's a single victory condition of getting 100 victory points. So I could still do that by conquering lots of enemies or being peaceful and, and growing a highly populous empire by myself. Right now, I'm actually not playing a normal game. I'm playing the daily challenge, which gives you special victory conditions. In this case, eliminate one enemy player and control 35 hexes. Okay, let's keep doing our scouting. I forget exactly where that goody hut was, but let's just kind of vaguely go this direction. Our settler, I think I might actually settle right here. I'm next to some salt, some stone, marble. Okay, let's let's queue up a move order for our axe man. He could move on top of this hill tile in one turn, but it would take two turns to get up on top of this tile. However, we have the woodsman upgrade. Removes terrain movement penalties, adds 25% terrain defense, and ignores 50% of enemy terrain defense. So let's upgrade our axe man. We can see you have an upgrade slot here. He's now a woodsman. And you can see how, uh, his statistics have changed here. 
Now if we issue a move order up to this hill, we can see we can get up there in only one turn, because there's no penalty for moving across hills anymore for him. But we actually want to move up this direction. Looks like we can bolster our new city of Orleans. All right, like I said, we got four wheat resources from our two things, and let's distribute these amongst our cities to grow. I can use one to get Paris up to a population of two. I can pick up all these three, put them in Orleans, and get Orleans up to two. I'm actually gonna scrap the warehouse. Give me my science resource to then play Mysticism. With Mysticism, I'll acquire God King. I'll play God King. I think I'm gonna take Divine Favor. I'll show you what I wanna do with this next turn. Um, for now, I'm actually going to, if I were to end my turn with cards in my hand, they would go to my discard pile. I actually am gonna wanna play Divine Favor next turn, so I'm gonna move it over here into my inventory. It takes up a slot in my inventory, just like a resource would. And I'll get dealt this card next turn uh, instead of one of the cards from the top of my deck. Okay, do I want to research horseback riding? No, I'm going to draw a new card. Lumber mill again. Do I have... I don't think I need my lumber mill because I've already built one here. I'm going to actually scrap lumber mill. So since I've already scrapped one card this turn, I've d I'm not rewarded with two hammers and one signs. I'm just given one hammer, but that's okay. It still gets it out of my deck. Great Lighthouse. Mm, so purple cards are world wonders. Only one person can build each wonder, and they often have two, two costs. I can either spend six hammers and four gold, or just two hammers plus two stone. I don't have any stone right now. In fact, I'm probably not going to build this. It gives me plus one gold for each water tile worked within two hexes of this city. I don't know I could, because I am working these two water tiles. Nah, let's scrap it. I've got seven hammers now. Hopefully I get something good that I actually want to use. Ooh, an archer. I think I actually will build my archer in Orleans. Now I'll have my archer there and my ax man will be moving up there to support him. And I guess with my last four hammers, I will research horseback riding. I won't be using any of these cards this turn because I don't have any horses. So it doesn't matter which one of these I put into my hand versus which ones get sent to my discard pile. Okay, here's the goody hut. Let's go pick that up. Okay, we can see that the Chinese player has a settler in their city. That's interesting. I think I'm going to move both my Axeman and my Archer right up here so that I can start attacking Beijing. There's no declaration of war in this game or anything. You're always free to attack any enemy players. Guess you're at permanent war. So this Divine Favor card, which I saved, uh, I think I'm gonna play it now on my Axeman. One important thing about this game, which I really like, is that military units require gold to maintain them, but it's not a flat fee of gold. It depends how far they are away from your territory. So right now, my Axeman and my Archer that are in my territory are each costing me one gold. So you can see Axeman minus one, Archer minus one. The farther I get away from my home territory, the more expensive it will be to maintain those units. So Divine Favor gives me plus three strength and no maintenance for three turns. So that's going to be great. I'm actually going to use that on my archer so now my archer has eight instead of five and no maintenance and once i get into enemy territory that will be even more valuable instead of saving me the one gold it will save me more than that you can see now that only the axeman but not the archer is costing me one gold my mission in this daily challenge is to control 35 hexes i currently have 20 out of 35 and I have to eliminate one enemy player. So I'll probably take over Beijing. That might get me to 35, but it might not. So let's go ahead and settle one more city. The alternate cost for settlers instead of four hammers is two food. And I have four food over here. So I'm going to go ahead and play my settler. Settlers, like military units, do consume a population. So I have to build them in Paris. And my man, my cities are not growing very fast. They're both still at one population, but that's okay. Let's get Orleans up to two. We can forage. Go ahead and grab this one. Fishing hut. So it gathers whale pearls and crabs, which I don't have in any of these water tiles. 
but it also adds one food to a water tile. And I am working this water tile, so it might be worth it to go ahead and build one there. Yep, gives me an extra food there. Okay, let's just scrap the harbor. Okay, so I've got four hammers left over. I have no cards to spend them on. I can't draw a card. So if I wanted to draw a card, it cost me two gold, which I only have one of, but I could convert one of these hammers to gold. Like that. So now I could draw a card and maybe build it. My other option would be to buy something from the marketplace. I could buy crabs, which is food, for three gold and use them to grow my cities some more. But you know what? Let's just draw a card. Oh, granary. Granaries are great. Immediately adds one population. And every time the city grows, it actually keeps half of its stored food. Unfortunately, I've already built... Oh, I haven't built anything in Orleans yet. Cool, let's build a granary there. Instantly went up to three. Oh, nice. We got a bunch of gold anyways from that goodie hut. Okay, first thing, let's check. Look, our axeman now is costing us minus two gold. And our archer would as well. If it weren't for that um, upgrade we gave him. You can also see how much a unit costs you by hovering over it here. You can see the two gold in the upper left corner. And you can't see it because my camera's in the way, but there's a show maintenance routes button, which shows the, the pathways from my capital, which influence the gold cost. So Orleans is costing us three gold to maintain the city. And my army here is costing us two gold. Okay, Orleans is also quite unhappy. So luxury resources and buildings can provide happiness to a city. We can see here that Orleans only has a current stock of two happiness units and it's losing three per turn. So I'm actually gonna go negative happiness next turn. And this yield pen penalty of 40% means that I'm missing out on some of the resources the city would produce because of their unhappiness. So. When I show resources, I can see these red X's through the two food icons here. So I'm not producing those food because of my unhappiness. So it's important for me to get this happiness up. How do I do that? One, I could build a building such as this monument, which adds plus one happiness and culture to all cities within two hexes. So I think that's gonna be a good move, especially because I can spend a marble to build this, and I have two marble, which I got from that goodie hut. So I'm gonna build my monument right here. Now we can see I'm only losing two happiness per turn. Unfortunately, I still need to do more work. I only have two happiness in this city. The main way to get happiness is from luxury resources. So this tile produces silver, which is a luxury resource, but only once you build a mine on it, which I don't have yet. But I can see over here in the marketplace, this symbol means that there is a luxury resource for sale, and it is salt. If I buy this salt, I will get two copies of it, which is a cool little mechanic. Any resource which you buy that you don't have any of yet, you actually get double. Unfortunately, it costs us five gold. I only have two gold, but remember, I can always use hammers as gold, and I think that's going to be worth it, actually, this turn. Ooh, I do... I have the mine card in my hand right now, so we definitely want to build a mine on the silver. And then I'll be producing a luxury resource every turn. Let's make sure I still have enough left over. Let's go ahead and, and do it now. I'm gonna, I don't have to do this. It, it would automatically do it, but I like to do it just to show it. I've got five gold now, so now I can buy this salt. If you have any cities that are below 50% happiness, it automatically distributes it. So what just happened there is one of those salt resources went to Orleans, and you can see that it went from two to three happiness. The other one I have here in my inventory, and I can spend it as I want. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and use it in Orleans to make them even more happy. So you can see now that I'm up to four. And these little red lines around it mean that that minus two per turn is, is going to be taken away at the end of the turn there. But that's okay, we've we've mitigated the urgent unhappiness and now our yield penalty is only 20%. We can see I'm only losing one of those yield icons because we've, we've mitigated most of the unhappiness. Now, I've got seven food. I don't want to spend them in Orleans because growing Orleans too fast will make it even more unhappy. Um, so instead, I'm going to use all seven of these in Paris. 
to grow Paris to three population, plus get well on its way to four. I'm gonna use my science to research writing. With writing, doesn't really matter. Ooh, I, great work, add happiness to a city. Cool, let's add more happiness to Orleans. All right, now I think we're done for our turn, except we gotta move all of our military units. Our scout is not really doing much over here. Let's just move him back up here. With both our axemen and our archer, we will attack Beijing. So, how combat works. You can see my axeman has eight combat strength. That represents not only his combat strength, but also his health. So he has eight hit points and does eight damage during combat. What's in Beijing here? Beijing has just a settler with only one combat strength. So I think we're actually gonna take out Beijing here. I can, with both my archer and my axeman, I can hit the attack key and click on Beijing. And the attack will take place at the turn change. So I should wipe out this guy. Basically, each of my units will do eight damage to him and he will do one damage to me. So in, in combat, basically the offense and the defense both do their combat damage to the other person. There are also hidden modifiers, as you saw, like terrain defense and whatnot if you were in, uh, in hills, um, but I don't think that's gonna save their settler. And what else do we have here? We have, oh yeah, I forgot we made a, another settler. So let's move him. Let's move him over here and end our turn. And let's watch the combat. Oh, they just built hanging gardens. Will you look at that? That was weird. He did three damage to me. I wonder if he had a bonus or, or had another unit there that he built at the end of the turn. Either way, my units are now in the enemy city of Beijing. What I can do is use one of my guys to claim territory. This will basically convert the enemy city to mine. I could also pillage the city and destroying it, but I would like this city for myself. So let's go ahead and claim it. Captured. So I'm curious, my, my objective is to eliminate one enemy player. I, I don't know if China has another city up here that we have to find before they're eliminated. Uh, we can see now, because I, I own all those Beijing tiles, I have 33 out of the 35 I need. Let's go ahead and settle our city. Now we have 40 out of the 35. Instead of playing this turn, I'm just going to go ahead and end it. I'm going to assume that China doesn't have any other cities, and hopefully I win the game as the turn completes. Victory! China did not stand the test of time. Cool, you can see that out of the two players that have completed the daily challenge today, I won. We both did it in eight turns, but I ended with a little more points than the other player. Oh, look at that, Russia was right over to my east. So now that the game's over, you can see the map. Okay, so how can you play Hexarchy? Two ways, one, there is a Hexarchy demo available on Steam, which is actually what I'm playing right now. Second of all, if you're watching this in March or April, 2022, there is currently a Kickstarter running to support the developer in bringing this game to its final release. If you contribute to that Kickstarter, as soon as the Kickstarter campaign is over, you will get access to the alpha version of this game. At a bare minimum, I recommend you download the demo from Steam. The demo is basically just a tutorial which you can play, but while the Kickstarter is live, the demo also includes online play, so this is actual true multiplayer, as well as the daily challenge, which has uh, fun, unique objectives each day and a leaderboard where you can compete with other players. All right, that's it for me. Check out the game Hexarchy. I'm really loving it. And I can't wait until there's a really cool competitive multiplayer scene that builds around this game.